Welcome to a short video summary of our Samsung Q900R LCD TV review. You can read the full in-depth review of this TV via the link in the description or by clicking the card top right of this video. The written review will cover more details of the TV performance, so be sure to visit AV forums to read it all. The Q900R is Samsung's first consumer 8K TV to be launched in the UK and it introduces a host of new scaling technologies. It's available in three screen sizes and starts with this 65 inch at £4,999, a 75 inch which retails at just under £7,000 and a monster 85 inch model that will set you back £15,000. We're looking at the 65 inch and we have it in our own testing rooms for review and the sample is a retail unit supplied by Samsung UK. It's clear to see that with the Q900R, Samsung has put in some real effort into the design aspect of the screen. It continues to use the now standard One Connect box, which is used on all higher end Samsung LED LCD TVs that Samsung calls QLED in their marketing. This box allows the TV to have just one connector at the rear and a thin fibre optic cable that runs from the TV to the One Connect box. The use of such a thin cable taking all the signals and power to the TV is a masterstroke in our opinion and allows real flexibility in setup and location of the TV with no unsightly cables trailing from the back of the set. It's a clean and clever design which also makes it possible for Samsung to just replace the box when HDMI 2.1 becomes a reality. After all it will need this if it's going to be able to send native 8K content via HDMI to the Q900R. We understand that owners will get the upgrade option once it's available but this will be at the owner's request and Samsung won't automatically swap them over. Samsung has given you two options for the feet placement with a central position and one at either end of the panel. The other neat trick is that the feet are hidden inside a recessed area at the back of the panel and can be left there if you're wall mounting or removed by unclipping them and then attaching them to the bottom of the panel. The feet are L-shaped and they screw easily into the centre or outside points and while feeling slightly flimsy on first handling, they are strong enough to support the panel with ease. The panel is sleek and minimalist with a 5mm metal strip around the sides and top and 15mm on the bottom. Around the back there is only the one connector for the one connect box with some vents top and bottom and the rest looks sleek. Overall the design and materials used are high quality and the fit and finish is also to a very high standard and worthy of the price point of the Q900. The connections for the Q900R are all on the One Connect box, which is identical to the one supplied with the Q9FN. It's larger than previous year's models as it now provides all the connections and power via one cable to the TV panel. We get four 18 gigabit per second HDMI inputs that can accept full bandwidth 4K signals with HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG high dynamic range, along with wide color gamut. You also get ARC on HDMI 3, and we also have a LAN port, built-in Wi-Fi, optical digital output and a common interface slot along with twin satellite tuners and a terrestrial RF socket. Around the side of the box are two USB 2 and one USB 3 port and finally there's a connection to the TV itself and the power socket. We're provided with two remote controls for the Q900R with a simple black plastic traditional affair with all the buttons and controls you would need and a brushed metal one. The traditional remote doesn't really need any introduction or explanation as it does everything you would expect and the buttons are all laid out in a logical manner. It has more direct access keys for things like the settings menu but it's also quite cluttered as traditional remotes normally are. The one remote is a minimalist sleek affair that is small and has a brushed metal finish. It has a good weight in the hand and it feels like a quality item that fits with the price point of the Q900R. There are very few buttons available which simplify and declutter the remote control. Samsung has always been strong when it comes to the ease of use and functionality within their TV products and that is certainly the case with the Q900. It uses the exact same smart TV system and features as the Q9FN with plenty of processing power available to manage multiple requests switching between apps and 4K HDR playback without any lag or stability issues. The home screen is the main hub of the QSmart system, offering the user a whole host of applications, live TV, sources and settings. This is displayed as a horizontal bar along the bottom of the screen with apps to the right and other options to the left. 
This launcher bar is incredibly intuitive to use and allows access to a number of functions including notification, settings, source, search function, apps, ambient mode, universal guide, live TV, TV+, smart things, gallery and the internet. The list of apps available is pretty vast with all the major video services available including all the terrestrial catch-up services, BBC iPlayer with HLG compatibility, Amazon and Netflix with HDR10 and also YouTube which offers 4K playback with HDR compatibility. It's a shame that it doesn't yet feature the capability to show the very small number of 8K videos in 8K. Vimeo was rumoured to be able to show 8K content via the app on the Samsung but we found that was not the case at the time of our review in December 2018. The Samsung Q900R uses a 65 inch VA LCD panel with a resolution of 7680 by 4320 pixels which comes to a grand total of 33 million pixels giving you a true 8K resolution. It features a full array, local dimming or fouled backlight using just under 500 zones and when combined with the new Quantum 8K processor it can use AI technology and advanced algorithms to control the local dimming intelligently to stop blooming and halo effects from being present. The Q900 also uses advanced upscaling to make sure that content is seen at its very best. This is extremely important as native 8K viewing material is incredibly hard to come by at this moment in time. Manufacturers might be launching 8K TVs now but the success of these early models will come down to just how good the video processing and scaling performance is. Once again, Samsung is using AI and machine learning to make sure that the upscaled images are the best that they could possibly be. Obviously, SD material can look bad even on an HD panel, so trying to show this on the Q900 is perhaps asking miracles of the best image processing available. However, by using machine learning with advanced databases and analysing the exact content and images consumers will be viewing, the AI works out how to make these images look the best they possibly can. When it finds new ways to improve the upscaling and other image parameters, Samsung then sends this as a firmware update to the Q900 TVs in consumers' homes. As such, it's constantly looking at improving the performance on offer. We set about finding the best settings out of the box that were close to the industry standards for Rec 709 Color and D65 Whitepoint. On the Q900R this is easy enough with just a few picture presets being available and movie being the most accurate. You do however need to switch off image manipulation features such as Auto Motion Plus, Contrast Enhancer, Digital Clean View along with setting the local dimming to standard for SDR content. We also switched to BT1886 gamma tracking and the colour tone was set to warm too. As we can see the out of the box grayscale tracking is very good indeed with just a little too much red and a very slight drop in blue and green as the scale gets brighter. This doesn't impact actual viewing material on screen as delta errors are low enough under the visual threshold of 3 that no colour tint is visible to grey. Gamma also tracks extremely well and the slight darkening at 10 IRE is caused by the local dimming changing at 0 IRE and our meter being too fast so it looks like there might be black crush but actually that's not the case with actual viewing material and tests. Colour gamut performance is also good with just a few points slightly off either saturation or hue but within error tolerances. There is a colour management system available in the menus to try and correct some of these slight issues but there is nothing here that concerns us when it comes to general consumers viewing the movie mode out of the box. Overall the out of the box settings are very good indeed. As we have controls available for white balance and a CMS for colour gamut adjustment, we set about trying to see just how accurate we could get the Q900R. Looking at the grayscale first, we used the 2 point and 20 point white balance controls to try and get tracking as flat as possible with good delta E errors and gamma. What we found was that the local dimming nature of the TV meant we couldn't get delta E errors any lower than what is shown in the graph as gamma tracking is affected by the local dimming algorithm in use with 10% windows changing brightness. There is no way to switch local dimming off on a Samsung TV as it is fundamental to how it produces an image. There is absolutely no problem with the grayscale tracking as it is perfect without any colour tint to grey and the gamma is also perfectly well behaved with actual viewing content on screen. 
Moving to Rec 709 Color, we can see that further correction of the white balance and some slight tweaks of the CMS brought most saturation tracking points to where they should be. Certainly 75% and under were very good and overall Delta E errors were also 0.9 on average which is well under the visible threshold of 3. The graph may not look pretty but it's actually very accurate with no visible errors contained within film or TV show playback on screen. Looking at the PQ EOTF tracking, we did find that out of the box settings for contrast were about 4 clicks too high and this affected the luminance tracking of the PQ EOTF and made it slightly too bright compared to the track guide. However this didn't suddenly overcook the image and cause major issues, it was just a tad too bright compared to the track guide. By making a slight adjustment of 4 clicks down on the contrast, we now had the PQ EOTF luminance tracking the guide correctly with minimal differences to actual HDR content on screen. As you can see the Q900R is a very bright LED LCD TV and is capable of peak brightness well in excess of the normal 1000 nit mastering and with 4000 nit content it has a gentle roll off from about 1100 nits to its peak so it preserves peak highlight details without clipping. The peak brightness of the Q900R is 2075 nits in the accurate movie mode with a 10% window. Moving to the DCI-P3 tracking within Rec 2020, we again had a good result from the Samsung with saturation tracking getting fairly close to where the point should be. There are errors with saturation and hue points and it doesn't look as pretty on the graph but colour luminance on the Samsung is very good indeed meaning it has a high colour volume when compared to an OLED screen giving it a more vivid and fuller colour reproduction. The 8K panel doesn't quite manage the entire colour gamut coverage of DCI-P3 according to our results but it has excellent luminance which makes up for that. Panel uniformity was very good indeed with no obvious clouding or pooling of light and no noticeable dirty screen effect at any uniform brightness level. There was some slight vertical banding seen now and again with very bright content but with football viewing and other sports content with large areas of one colour during pans of the camera it wasn't noticeable unless you went looking for it. Viewing angles are not brilliant but then again it is a VA panel and as such to get the best possible performance you need to be watching the TV directly on. Moving to 30 degrees or more introduces issues with contrast and colour shifts and blacks become milky. You also start to notice haloing and blooming from the fouled backlight when off axis by more than 30 degrees. Watching directly on there are no issues visible. This is an inherent drawback of the VA panel technology but the compromises made by using such a panel are excellent black levels and contrast performance. The Q900R produces one of the best black level and shadow detail performances we've seen from an LED LCD TV. Thanks to its fold backlight and just under 500 zones and excellent AI dimming algorithms, we were extremely impressed with its inky deep blacks and superb shadow detail retrieval. It wasn't perfect and we did see instances of the TV being caught out now and again by brightness changes within a scene. We also had issues with certain scenes in HDR content causing the dimming to pulse and flicker as luminance in the scene changed and confused the dimming. This was very noticeable in the final chapter of Pan as Peter collects his friends. However upon reporting this to Samsung it was an issue that they had already been working to resolve and we were sent a firmware update that completely solved the issues without adding any new problems. Only now and again did we notice any slight changes in the dimming as the majority of our film and TV viewing looked superb. With the AI and machine learning being used with the Q900R we also believe that Samsung will be proactive in ensuring that the TV is updated regularly with picture quality improvements. There are of course frame interpolation and smoothing technologies on board the Q900R under the Auto Motion Plus menu. Here you have options for Off, Auto and Custom and the TV ships with Auto so make sure you switch this off for film and drama viewing at 24 frames per second. With video based content you can of course experiment and we found Auto was just too much in terms of smoothing and soap opera effect. However, using the custom settings it was possible to dial in good motion with very slight interpolation seen and no obvious artifacts. There's also black frame insertion technology available and it's called LED clear motion. 
This works far better than recent examples we've seen on OLED screens with far less noticeable flicker but screen brightness does drop. You can obviously add more brightness in by upping the panel brightness to combat this but this will start to highlight the flickering more. Input lag for gaming was just 16.7 milliseconds which is excellent. We found that the performance of the VA panel is very much dependent on your seating position as you would expect. However, when viewed straight on as intended, the black levels, shadow detail, sharpness and colour saturation are superb thanks to the advanced local dimming algorithms, zone count and lack of blooming and haloing. With HD and higher resolution content, the Samsung Q900R turns in an excellent performance with movie and TV show content with very good motion with 24 frames per second material. The HDR performance of the Q900R is simply the best I've seen in 2018. Once again, when viewed directly onto the TV, the black levels, local dimming and stunning peak highlights of 2075 nits brightness all come together to offer superb image quality. The vast majority of HDR content is mastered at 1000 nits and, as such, the Samsung has little to do with its tone mapping. This means we're seeing the content with its full intended brightness and colour grade. Even 4000 content such as Blade Runner and Pan are not clipped in any way thanks to excellent mapping and the already very capable 2000 plus nit performance of the Q900. Reflections look utterly real and impactful while lightning and flame are stunningly bright yet detailed and fluid. It adds so much impact to an image when the display is capable of such dynamic range and brightness. The one weakness to all of our praise here for the Q900R is the viewing angles of the panel which are an inherent trait of the technology. Move off axes and haloing and blooming do become an issue that affects performance and viewing enjoyment. However, knowing that and setting the TV up in your viewing room correctly will mitigate and rid you of those issues. Moving to real 8K material courtesy of a few sales demos from Samsung on a USB stick really highlighted what this TV is ultimately capable of with native content. However, that was all I was able to view on the TV at this time in 8K as the content really is scarce in Europe. Which brings me to the last thought I have in terms of image quality resolution and the relevance of the Q900R. Watching side by side comparisons of 4K content on the Q900R and either the LG C8 or Q9FN I used for the comparisons, there was no immediate jump in resolution alone from my normal viewing distance of 7 feet that would separate either screen, even though one is 8K resolution. Put native 8K content into the equation and there will be a difference to see, but with upscaled content, which is all we have at the moment, there is no real standout image difference when it comes to the resolution alone. However, don't get me wrong because with a 4K and 8K TV next to each other, you're hardly suffering from a lack of detail and picture quality. It's just that the jump up in the resolution is not as big as I was expecting, but the quality is first class. We have been fair and balanced in our appraisal of the Q900R including hours of comparison testing, torture testing and assessing performance over a number of weeks to give you our honest appraisal of this Samsung. It won't suit everyone but in terms of its market position, performance and price point we think it deserves a highly recommended badge and you should consider a demonstration if it fits your requirements. We go into far more detail about this TV and more in our written review on AB forums so head over there now to check it out. If you enjoyed this video then please like and subscribe and press the notification bell to be told when our next review is live. You can find more reviews, news and articles like this at avforums.com, Europe's largest community for TVs, home cinema, movies, games, tech and gadgets. Thanks for watching.